it. You guys ready for an adventure? We are on our way to go look for fossils. Now, I told you guys uh, about a month or so ago, maybe, when I posted the fossil video online, uh, that we would come back sometime this summer. Well, today is the day. Um, I wanted to come back before now, but we've had a super wet summer already, and we had almost a month of straight rain, and I had to wait for the water to go down, and finally, for about a week and a half now, it hasn't rained a drop. So I'm hoping that the creek is good and low and we'll be able to get in and dig some fossils. So we've got about a 40 minute drive, give or take, and uh, we'll see you when we get there. Hang tight, we'll be right back. Creek. Um, for those of you that don't remember, uh, this is a public creek. Um, there's different spots in it that are better than others, but this is Green Mill Run in Greenville, North Carolina. I don't mind sharing it because half of the world already knows about it anyway, but for those of you that don't, just do a quick Google search of GMR or Green Mill Run and uh, you should be able to find where this creek is at. And uh, it's a good place, you know, come on the weekend, bring your kids, your family, look for shark teeth. So I'm going to give you a couple tips and show you a couple things that I see. And then we're going to start looking for some fossils. So let me get, go over the tips with you first. Now, I recommend when you come to do this that you bring four things. You need a backpack with water, snacks, and whatnot in it. You need a probe. Now, this is to help you find big gravel under the sand as well as to hold your screen down in the creek you can take your probe and stick it through the mesh into the sand and it keeps your screen from floating downstream because there is a current in here so the probe is a multitasking tool you need a good sturdy shovel this is an all metal shovel from Fiskars if anybody's interested I can put a link in it but you can buy them at Lowe's or Home Depot and the screen now the screen is nothing but two befores and nail together in a square and I prefer to use half inch screen rather than quarter inch screen. Reason for that is if you use quarter inch screen you're going to catch a ton of mud and rocks and everything else. If you use the bigger screen the smaller stuff is going to fall through and it's going to uh, you know it'll enable you to look through the rocks a little bit better. So let's take a look at what I see here. So somebody was, has just been here, I'd say this weekend. There's two giant spoil piles right here. And uh, there's a pretty big hole right here where they were digging. But you see this, see this log right here? Now this log is a tooth trap. So as the creek um, rises and falls and it washes new fossils out of the banks, things like this, trees and rocks, the, uh, the teeth get trapped behind this log. The sand continues to flow over and the teeth remain there. So anytime you're in this creek digging or a creek digging, look for teeth traps. That's what I call that right there. Let's take a look in their uh, spool piles and just kind of see what they were digging. There's a bunch of uh, bone in here, of course. Now I've looked in this spool piles before, there's bone and found uh, Indian pottery and some fossils that they didn't know uh, what they were. But these guys look like they kind of know what they're doing. They got big spoil piles right in the center of the creek. So let's just look around here for just a few minutes just to see if they missed anything. Yeah, there's a giant whale bone right there. Might keep that. That's actually a really pretty piece. don't see anything that they missed. All right, 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our probe and I'm just gonna kinda work down through the creek here, probing in the sand, okay? Now, you wanna listen for big gravel. You don't wanna worry about the little gravel. And you can tell the difference. If your probe goes through it really easy, you hear a crunch, but it goes through the gravel real easy, more than likely that's pea gravel. That's not what you want. There's teeth in that, but they're itty bitty teeny tiny teeth. What you're looking for is big thick gravel like this, where when you push your probe down in there, it's really hard to get it to go through. There's a big crunch and you, you can hardly, no matter how much pressure you put on it, you can hardly, can't hardly get your probe down through there. So we're gonna probe down through here and uh, once we find a spot like I'm talking about, I'll show you what it sounds like and uh, we'll start digging. We're gonna be here probably three or four or five hours. So hopefully we'll come out with something good. Be back shortly. Okay, so I found one of those areas I was telling you about uh, to listen for for the crunch of the probe. So this is pea gravel. Take it down and let you see that. That's what we call pea gravel. Now, how you tell the difference with the probe is listen to the sound. All right, shh, ready? Hear how that was, uh, there was a crunch there, but it, the probe went down really easy through there. It was kind of a, a high pitch uh, crunch. Okay, now listen to this. Hear how that was a pretty heavy crunch. That means that there is a um, thick gravel layer right down there about oh, four foot deep. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start opening this up. And once we get to that gravel layer, we'll let you know if we find any teeth. If we don't find anything here, we'll move on down a little bit and uh, see what else we can come up with. Be back in a minute. Okay, I got the mud out, the dirt and the sand, and we'll take a look at the screen together. Now I'll give you guys a, a quick tip. Now, a lot of people will come in here and they'll dig, you know, a little hole a foot deep or so, and then they'll move on to the next spot. They'll dig a hole a foot deep or so, move on to the next spot. Now you'll find teeth that way, but if you want to find a good majority of teeth, the best way is to dig deep. The deeper you dig, the more likely you have of finding big teeth. So let's take a look in the screen here and see if uh, see if we got anything. Man, I hope so. Let me set you guys back up here. got some bone this is whale bone we're not going to keep that there's some whale bone there's some more whale bone I'm not seeing anything yet Like I say, I've just started getting into big gravel. So um, hopefully here pretty soon we'll, uh, we'll have a tooth. 
All right, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I finally got a tooth. I'm gonna pick the screen up and we'll see if you guys can spot it. Do you see it? It's right there. Looks like a little worn Megalodon. It's about a uh, half inch, inch, about an inch and a half. Nice little tooth. We'll definitely keep that. And uh, we'll keep looking. Be back when we get another one. Okay, so I just found one of the things that I'm after. Check this out. You guys see it? Right there. That is a nice great white. The, uh, the tips broke off of him. Let's see, he's one, almost two inches long. That is a beautiful tooth right there. We'll be back as soon as we find another one. So I just got a pretty interesting fossil. Now, forgive me if I'm wrong here. I'm pretty sure I know what this is. This, I think, is what's called a scoot. Um, I think this was like uh, the shell of a turtle or some sort of, uh, I can't remember what it, what it went on, um, the kind of animal it went on, but I'm pretty sure this is called a scoot. Anyway, it's, it's basically it's armor plating is what it is. It's pretty cool. Definitely keep that too. Stick her in the pocket. See you on the next one. So this just came up on the screen. And this is a, basically a giant whale bone. It look, kind of looks like a hip bone of sorts. It's pretty neat. We might keep that. We might not. We might leave it here for the kids. That's cool. See you at the next one. Okay, so I just dug six teeth out of one screen. None of them are really worth recording, but because I haven't found very many, I'll go ahead and show you these. There's one in here that's pretty nice. It's a nice uh, hemi. That's the six that I just got. You know, this is a um, hemi priestess. That's a pretty nice little tooth there. This one, I'm not sure, that might be a mako. Some of these that are really worn, it's uh, it's hard to tell, you know, what they were. But we'll definitely keep them and see you at the next one. So I haven't found anything in a right good little while. Um, you know, a lot of people look for the big megalodon teeth. Well, this creek is known for its great whites and mako teeth. And that's what I'm really looking for are the nice big great whites like I found to start with. Um, or the big Mako teeth. So I am finding some teeth, but I don't feel that they're video worthy. So I'm not getting them on video, but I will show you them at the end, at the wrap-up. Um, but I do have something here that's pretty neat. Haven't found one of these in a long time, and uh, I'm gonna show you that. So right here is a piece of petrified wood. That's pretty neat. The last piece I got was about six inches long, but you can see the wood grain in it. Definitely tell it's a piece of wood that's been turned to stone. That has been in here a long, long time. Millions of years. We'll definitely keep that and stick it in the pocket. I'll let you know when, uh, when we find something cool. All right, so I got something here. I want to show you guys if you remember on my first video um, when I did the fossils I talked about these things right here now this is called a belonite or balumnite forgive me if I'm not pronouncing that correctly but it looks like a pencil well basically what this is is this was a squid this would have been his head and you know and his tentacles would have been back here and he would have you know jetted through the water millions of years ago so that's pretty cool that's what that is that's a fairly small one I've seen them as big as my pinky in here before so we'll keep that 
and uh, keep at it for a little while longer. Okay, so I got a tooth in the screen. I'm going to show you this first. I just dug this before this screen. And this is that uh, that same thing, that belumnite or belumnite or whatever how you pronounce it, the squid. As you can see, this one is much bigger. It's almost the length of my finger. Well, it probably is the length of my pinky. Yeah, it's pretty close. And it's uh, much bigger round. So that gives you a better perspective of, of what those things look like. So as I said, this is the head. And then the tentacles would have been back here. And he would have, you know, scooted through the water as such. I think these are Cretaceous, but don't quote me on that. Let's take a look at the screen. Uh, it's my first Mako. But it doesn't have a root. The roots broke off of it. See if you guys can see it first. It's right there. That's a nice, pretty nice Mako. Been great if the root had have been on there, because the tip's almost perfect. So I would say that that one was probably it's probably right around two inches, maybe a little better than that. We'll definitely keep it and add it to the pocket. Let you go when we get to the next one. Okay, well it's slow, but persistence pays off. I got a couple in the screen here. See if you guys can spot them before I pick them out. I already know what they are. One's a Megalodon and one is a Mako. So I'll show you those. Let me know if you can spot them. Not that one. I picked that one out to start with. All right, you guys see them? I'll give you a few minutes. They're in the dry area. There's one right here. This is the Meg. It's pretty wore out, as most of them in this creek are. See the other one? It's right here. Little Mako tooth. Got some root lobe damage to it. Blade looks pretty good. Nice little tooth. Well, that was all in this screen. And like I say, it's uh it's kind of well, there's one right here. What's left of one? Like I say, it's kind of slow. But uh persistence pays off. If you want teeth in this creek, you gotta work for them. Especially nice ones. So we're gonna stay here about another hour or two and then we're gonna book it out of here. We got a I probably got uh probably got 20 teeth in my pocket so far. Really only a couple of nice ones. The rest of them are gonna be just display teeth. Um but we'll keep at it. Maybe we'll get a nice great white before we leave what I'm hoping for just keep looking sifted. so I haven't sifted this screen yet but I just saw something that I had actually forgotten about uh, that I want to point out if anybody knows the truth to this uh, please let me know if you look in this green clay right here see all that red I was told that those are actually rubies I think they might be garnets, but um, somebody told me that they were rubies. And the only time you hit them is when you get in this green clay. I mean, there is, they're in there by the thousands. And I suppose you could pick all of them out with some tweezers, you know, but uh, we're not gonna do all that. Anybody knows the truth of that? Let me know. Let's sift this screen and See if there's anything in it. Okay, well I've been at this for about uh, six hours and I have about had all I can take for today. Uh, I've made it back to the truck. I got the stuff laid out on the tailgate. Didn't really set the world on fire today, but I did find a couple of good things. Uh, one of which, well two of which, will be um, in their own little display. The rest are gonna go into a big, I got a big Riker, like a big, uh, uh, like a general store case, like cheese case, you know, opens up 
and I've got a bunch of teeth in there. So the majority of these will go in there, but there's a couple that will uh, that will go up on the get its own individual riker. So like I said, it set the world on fire, but uh, I did find a couple things. So I'll go ahead and show you what I found. That's what we ended up with. We got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we got 20 fossils all together. Uh, and I'm sure some smaller teeth that drop through that screen um, but you know, I, I just don't have any interest in keeping the little itty bitty teeny tiny teeth. So highlight of the day was the great white with the broken tip. Now how you can tell the difference between a great white and a, um, like a Mako is on this Mako, the edge of the tooth is smooth. There's no serrations on it. On the edge of this great white, there are serrations. So that's how you can tell the difference between a great white and a mako. So the mako would have been pretty nice if the root lobe had been on there. Got one pretty ugly megalodon. Got the nice uh, piece of petrified wood. Got the scoot. Uh, there's a couple of little nice makos in here. That one's pretty nice. That one's pretty nice. And then a couple of these, you know, they're pretty nice looking teeth. This hemi. It's pretty nice. Got this little mag here. It doesn't look too bad. It's kind of worn down, but it's uh, it's better than most that come out of there. So all in all, it wasn't a bad day. And uh, if you guys want to do it again, we'll come back and do it again. Next time we might find uh, a lot more, a lot more bigger teeth. You never know. So as always, I appreciate appreciate you guys for coming along. Don't forget to click the subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one.